Many of you guys are familiar with using OBS for recording and live streaming to Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. But for some of you, it may be kind of complicated to use OBS for everything that you need to do. This is especially the case if you don't like doing all the manual customization via plugins, adding them, and then having to configure. That's not for everybody. That's why today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use Prism Live Studio, which is a fantastic OBS alternative that's jam-packed full of features. Let me show you how to use it. The first thing you guys are gonna to wanna to do is head over to prismlive.com. I also left a link in the description below, but on this site, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're on the PC tab, and then you'll see a yellow button for download now. It'll be for Windows 10 or 11 on a 64-bit operating system. Unfortunately, this does not currently support Mac OS. Hopefully that'll come shortly in the future, but right now, if you're on a Windows computer, you can go ahead and download this like you would any other normal application. Once it's installed then you can just sign in with an account that you have it doesn't have to be the streaming account that you're planning to use this is just going to log you into prism live studio within the app itself you'll find that it looks pretty visually similar to obs on the left you have your scenes in the middle you'll have your sources for your webcam capture card all that good stuff to the right of that, you have your audio mixer. Up at the top, you're gonna see a banner of all the social media channels that you can log into. I'm currently just logged into Twitch and YouTube, but there's a bunch more that you'll have the ability to log into if you want, including Facebook, Twitter, even adding a custom RTMP option if you have your own stream key, for example. To the right of that, you have your go live button to start your stream and a recording option as well. The right side panel of this app are Prism specific widgets, which we'll check out in a little bit more detail but one of the ones you should know about right off the bat is enabling studio mode or disabling it so a lot of you guys may see two black screens when you first get into this app if you're just getting started with live streaming it'll be easier for you if you have studio mode toggled off so you can just work with one scene at a time a little less overwhelming to get to your settings you can either click on your profile picture or you can go to the bottom and click the settings icon there there's also a third way to get to your settings and that's where your stream and video health information is you can even click on this up arrow to see a bit more details if you need it but if you're just trying to get to the settings just click on that icon next to the resolution speaking of the prism live studio settings it's insane how easy it is to navigate these settings when you're starting out on general really the only important thing on this page is to make sure that you don't have the watermark enabled because you don't want a watermark over your gameplay or your stream it doesn't look all that great if you go to the output tab really you can just keep this at 1920 by 1080 that's fine if you're going to be using different streaming platforms luckily if you click on this output settings guide it'll give you the recommendations for the resolution settings for twitch youtube and facebook and you can just select whichever option that you're planning on streaming to and it'll apply those settings directly to the prism live studio app so it really just takes the work out of you to have to configure all your settings if you have a pretty good computer you can honestly change your fps value to 60 for the output mode keep this at simple the video bitrate is honestly pretty good at 6000 unless you know your internet upload speed is just not that good one important thing you guys are going to want to keep in mind though is the encoder Typically, if you have a dedicated graphics card, go with that graphics card. In my case, I have a dedicated AMD graphics card. You would wanna select that over the software encoder, which is your CPU, because if you put all the strain of streaming and recording on the CPU, it's just gonna be laggy. Avoid using that if you have a dedicated graphics card. If you don't, you can definitely still go with the software encoder, but if you're experiencing any lagging, you're gonna wanna enable the advanced encoder settings, and then for your encoder preset, you're gonna wanna make this super fast or ultra fast to start alleviating the issue, and even including lowering your bit rate. For the recording section, you can change the path to whatever you'd like. Recording quality can remain default. You can keep it at high quality, preferably. Recording format, I like to have this at MP4. I know that in the case that something goes wrong you may lose your recording but mp4 is just more compatible with a lot of different video editors out there so that's why i prefer to use that and you might want to do the same if you're one of those people who love to capture those high 
highlight moments, then you may want to check out enabling the replay buffer as this will continuously record a certain amount of time that has already elapsed that you want to recapture and record. But everything else within the output tab here, you can honestly keep default. For the audio section, the most important thing you want to enable here is your microphone, such as what I have right here, a nice USB microphone that you've plugged into your computer. So all you would need to do is go to one of your mic auxiliary devices, select the drop down, and then just choose your microphone. For the desktop audio, you can keep this default or change it to your headphones if you want. That'll allow anything that you hear through your desktop to be recorded in Prism. For the visual, this is gonna be your base canvas. Just keep this at 1920 by 1080. Nothing else that you need to do here. Source, just keep this all the same. Nothing that you need to adjust here. Then you have your hotkey section. So any additional scenes, sources that you add that you wanna switch, enable, disable, you can set a key bind for that that you can also pair with an Elgato Stream Deck if you have one to be able to do things very quickly throughout Prism Live Studio. Once you're all good with your settings, go ahead and select apply and okay. And now it's time to set up some scenes. I'm gonna rename this first default scene to gameplay. And now I'm gonna go over to the middle to sources, select the plus button. And this is gonna be a video capture device. We're gonna select that, then okay. We're gonna call this the capture card. And now we wait a little bit, and this is the capture card we're gonna go with. Deactivate, activate, and there is my gameplay. Nothing else that I need to do here. Everything looks good, we're gonna select okay. And now you see my gameplay right within the scene. I wanna make sure that my audio is coming through for this capture card source. As you can see in the mixer, we don't see anything here. So what we can do is select the plus button and we can add a mic audio capture device. That's one option, but we can also go to our settings, go to audio, and then for another one of our mic auxiliary devices, we can select the capture card that we're using, select apply and okay. And if we scroll down a little bit here, you can see for that second mic auxiliary device, you see the game audio coming through. Now, why did I add that audio in settings instead of as its own individual source? Well, if I did it as its own source, that audio from the gameplay is only going to apply to that individual scene. But if I did it for the settings, that audio that I just applied to the mic auxiliary too, it's going to apply across my entire scene profile. So no matter how many additional scenes I add within my project here, that game audio will always come through. Some other cool source options that we have are capturing our monitor either fully or partially. What's really cool if we try to select a partial area of the monitor, we can actually draw out the area that we want to select. Whatever area of the monitor we end up going with, we can just select the check mark option to confirm it. Then just select OK and you'll have it right in your scene. Additionally, if you wanna capture one specific app on your computer, then you can just do a window capture source Select the window dropdown and choose which app that you want to display, just like you would in OBS. Now you can also add images or videos into your scene that you might have on your computer. I have a graphic face cam video that I wanna add into my scene. So I'm gonna select the video music option, select okay, gonna name that face cam border. Now we're just gonna browse for the file. There it is, we're gonna open that bad boy up select OK, there's our face cam border. Now I have these empty boxes here which can include text. Luckily, I have a link from Stream Elements that we can include right within this project. You can do this with Streamlabs links, of course, any browser link. So all you would need to do under your default sources is go to the web option. Within Stream Elements, I can now copy the link to this specific overlay, then go back to Prism, put that URL, into the web source. I'll make sure that this is 1920 by 1080. Okay, that is looking pretty good. Now it's time to add the face cam to the mix and we're not adding this like you think we're gonna add it. We're gonna go here to sources, but we're not gonna do a video capture device for the webcam. We're actually gonna do the Prism camera, which is one of their special widgets that they have here. Select okay, select okay again. Now it's gonna load up. We need to select our face cam or whichever webcam that we're planning on using as a device. I'm gonna go with the Elgato face cam that's right in front of me here. We don't need to do anything else within this section. Just select select OK, but this is just looking like a basic webcam. What's so special about this? With the Prism camera source selected, go to the right side and select the virtual background option. This will allow you to add cool effects to your background of your face cam, such as blurring it out. There's also a remove background tool. So if you select that, look, 
the background is gone. It's like there's a green screen behind me, but there isn't a green screen. Now, of course, this isn't perfect by any means. It's you know just something to kind of get by, but it works. You also have all of these background effects you can apply behind your face cam as well. Let's check out the original here with a little bit of blur exit out and then let's shrink this down a little bit move it over near the face cam and i'm going to reorder these layers now so i'm going to take the prism camera and put it under the face cam border so that way it's above the gameplay but not above the face cam so let me center myself and then we're going to press the alt key and then just bring in the sides a little bit and the bottom something else to note is if you want to mess around with your camera even more you can apply beauty filters such as the cute and sharp filters if for some reason you want to modify the formation of your face slightly you can specify how you want to look by adjusting the knobs below and if all of those filters don't suit your needs you can always apply the standard obs video and audio effects to any of your sources and now it's looking pretty clean under prism camera you have prism mobile and you'll be able to use your phone as a webcam or even screen record your phone straight into this app on your computer. You have the text template, which will allow you to add different formats of text into your project. Quite a few different options that you can go with here, even full graphical options if you want. The social media banners, which I like a lot. It's a good way of reminding people to subscribe or like the stream. You can check out the caption options here, as well as the stickers that are available. After you've selected a template, you can go over to the detailed settings tab, and this is where you can select the font. Is it gonna be bold, italicized? what's gonna be the size. You can set the color of it as well. You can put in what the text is gonna say. A lot of different things you can play around with here to make the text uniquely yours for your stream. Next, the Prism chat source will be an overlay that will merge all of the different chats from any of the live streams that you're pushing to to merge as an overlay on top of your stream. You have a few different styles you can choose from. You can also select the font size. Once you're happy with it, you can select OK and you'll get to see a little preview for what that chat overlay would look like over your stream when it's active and live. You have a viewer count widget, which is pretty self-explanatory. How many viewers do you have on stream? this overlay will show it. You have prism stickers, which actually look pretty cool because they're graphical. You can probably pair this with a keybind and enable and disable it depending on what's happening on the stream, but it's definitely something fun to play with. You also have a Giphy sticker, and if you add this, you can actually search up your own gifts if you want or check out the trending ones. Find something that you like, just add it on in, take it, grab it, and put it wherever you want on your stream. <laughs> The music playlist is also pretty cool because if you add this on in, you can actually add your own tunes that are off of your desktop into Prism. So what I'm gonna do here is select add and edit. Then I'm gonna have another dialog box come up here, select add music, and then I can choose either local file or the music that Prism offers. I have some music of my own I wanna add, so I'm gonna select add local file. Here are my songs. We're gonna select open, select play. I can hear the jams going. Let's make things even more interesting. We're gonna add another source, and this time it's gonna be the audio visualizer. So now all the audio that's playing through the stream, this source is gonna be able to pick up all of those sounds. We'll keep with the default, it's transparent, and look how cool this is, guys. I can just stretch this across. Dude, this, this stream is going crazy right now. Oh my goodness. All right, all right, all right. We gotta chill a little bit. We, we wilding out here. Below the audio visualizer, we have background template, which is actually pretty fun to play around with. There's so many here that Prism offers. Since we're all about moons on this channel, let's go with the moons and put that in here. And then I'm gonna set this background template to the back of Prism camera. And then I'm gonna go into Prism camera, do the virtual background camera. And we're gonna remove the background this time, actually. Exit out of there like that. And now we're, we're in space, baby. We're in the sky. Under that, you have the clock widget, which if you add this, you'll be able to have a countdown timer or just show the time of day, depending on where you are or which time you want to show. You can select between the templates here and then configure them as you wish from the time the countdown timer will start all the way down to the text color and transparency of that clock. I do have a drawing tool on the right side here. Pick a color. Let's go with let's go with red. Everybody loves red arrows. We are pointing to the moon. Completely make fun of myself here because 
this is what I do. At this point, you should be pretty set to stream. If anything, you can do a little bit of a cleanup action within your audio mixer from any additional sources that you might have added that aren't serving you any purpose. Go ahead and hide those. Now, if you're not hearing your game audio, one thing that you can do is monitor and output that audio. So luckily Prism Live Studio has an option just to toggle that on so you can just start hearing your game audio if you're using a capture card, of course. Now, you might find that the desktop audio is going to duplicate this audio that's coming through. So if you're experiencing that sort of issue, all you would need to do is go to your settings and then for the mic auxiliary device too, that is applied to the capture card audio. You're just going to want to monitor only and then mute the output. So that way only the desktop audio is going to have that gameplay audio recorded. It's not going to be both the desktop audio and the, cap the actual capture card audio source. So you just want to have one source truly playing that audio out to have a nice clean sounding stream. Once you're logged into the social media channels that you want to stream to, select the go live button and then put in the stream information for each of those social media channels right within Prism and then select the go live button one more time within this pop up box and you'll be officially live pushing across multiple channels all at the same time. Yes, it's free multi-streaming. While you're live, you can select the chat icon on the right hand side to pull up the chat window for monitoring the chats from all of the platforms you're live streaming to. You can even reply to chats right within this window. There's also a cool feature for remotely controlling your live stream using the Prism Live Studio app on your mobile phone. Within this app, you'll have the ability to scan the QR code to connect your computer with your mobile phone, and that'll jump you straight into your decks, which can be created or configured to perform various functions across your live stream at the single click of a button in real time. Once you're all done with your stream, you can go back to the Prism Live Studio app and then just select to stop the stream and that'll end your live stream across all of your channels. But there you have it guys, that's a complete full tutorial guide over Prism Live Studio and how to use it. Give it a try, let me know what you guys think of it in the comment section below. Do you guys wanna see some more content around this app? It's honestly a pretty good one, though it does use a bit more CPU usage than OBS, so that's something to keep in mind, but it's definitely a really good app and it's super easy to get around and use. Remember to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Thank you so much for Prism for sponsoring this video. This wouldn't have been possible to share without your support. I really, really appreciate it. And with that, I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.